hey everyone welcome back to the channel i hope you are all doing great today we are going to dive into something pretty interesting and super practical for those of you building great applications we will be talking about kit services in dotnet 8. we are gonna see how this feature can make your code cleaner and more flexible before we get started just a quick heads up you need to be familiar with dependency injection in dotnet if you are not comfortable with GI yet, I'd recommend checking out some of my earlier videos or tutorials on that topic. Trust me, it's a foundational concept that will make this tutorial much easier to follow. So grab your favorite drink, get comfy, and let's jump into this. So what exactly are kit services? Basically, they let you register multiple versions of an interface in the DI container, each with its own unique key. This is super handy when you need to swap between different implementations at runtime. Think of it like having different tools for different jobs, but all nicely organized. For example, you might have different logging mechanism or multiple database connections, and you can switch between them easily using keys. Now let's look at some real world scenarios where kit services can be invaluable. In an e-commerce application, it's crucial to provide customers with multiple payment options to enhance their shopping experience and cater to their preferences. Handling multiple payment gateways can get complicated if you don't have a structured approach. Different customers have different payment preferences. Some might prefer PayPal for its security and buyer protection, while others might prefer Stripe for its simplicity or Square for its integration with their existing point of sale systems. Certain payment gateways might be more popular or available in specific regions. Offering multiple gateways ensure that you can cater to a global customer base without excluding anyone. All right, let's dive into some code. We will start by creating a new .NET 8 console app project in Visual Studio. This will serve as our playground to demonstrate how to implement multiple payment gateways using kit services. First, launch Visual Studio. If you don't have it open yet, go ahead and start it now. Click on Create a new project in the project template. Select Console App and give your project a name like uh, Kit Services Demo. Uh, make sure it's set to use .NET 8 and hit Create. Next, we need to define an interface that all our payment services will implement. This interface will ensure that each payment gateway has a consistent method for processing payments. Uh, in this interface, we've defined a method process payment that takes an order object. Each payment service will implement this method. Before we create payment services, let's quickly define an order class that will be used as an input for our payment processing. This class has two properties, order ID and amount. Now we will create a specific classes for each payment gateway. Each class will implement iPayment service interface and provide its own logic for processing payments. This modular approach ensures that our code remains clean and easy to manage. The PayPal payment service class will handle payments through PayPal. This class will implement iPayment service interface, ensuring it has a process payment method to handle the payment logic specific to PayPal. Uh, the Stripe payment service class will handle payments through Stripe, like the PayPal service, it implements iPayment service interface and provides the logic specific to Stripe. And finally, for Square, we are gonna do like PayPal payment service and Stripe payment service. All right, folks, uh, let's dive into the code step by step. This part of code is uh, all about setting up the host and registering different payment services using kit services in .NET 8. Uh, here's what the code looks like. Uh, we start by creating a host using host.createDefaultBuilder. 
think of the host as the central place where everything uh, gets uh, set up it's like the main hub for your apps configuration logging and dependency injection what about uh, configure services uh, here we are saying hey uh, let's configure some services this is where we tell our app which service we are gonna uh, use and how to set them up uh, registering kit services uh, this part is where the magic happens uh, we are registering three different implementation uh, of the ipayment service interface paypal payment service uh, under the key paypal uh, stripe payment service uh, this register under the key stripe uh, and uh, finally a square payment service uh, under the key a square uh, uh, by using keys we can easily choose which payment service to use at runtime based on uh, some condition like user input uh, it's um, super flexible next we set up a loop to continuously read input and resolve the corresponding payment service creates an infinite loop Basically, it keeps running forever or until you manually stop the application. This is handy for continuously reading user input and processing payments as long as the app is running. This line prints a message to the console, prompting the user to enter the name of the payment gateway they want to use. Here we are grabbing the service provider from our host. The service provider is like a big toolbox that knows how to create and give us in instance of all services we have registered. And this is where the fun begins. Kids required kid service uses user input to find the right payment service we registered earlier with those exact kids. It's like saying, hey toolbox, give me the payment service for this specific gateway we expect them to type either paypal stripe or a square once we have the right payment service we call its uh, process payment method we are passing in a new order object with some dummy data this line is where the selected payment service actually does its job now we've gone through the code let's run the application and see it in action press f5 once the application starts you will see a message asking you to enter your payment gateway type in one of the registered keys such as paypal stripe or square and hit enter for example if i type paypal it will run paypal service with this message and if i type uh, s square it will run s square service with this message each time you type paypal stripe or s square the app uses the corresponding payment service to process an order so that's how you set up and run a console application using kit services in .NET 8. This makes it super easy to switch between different implementations based on user input, making your application more flexible and maintainable. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment if you have any questions, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for .NET tips and tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.